Channel 9, it's Graham Kennedy's and Melbourne Tonight. With Joff Allen, Rosie Sturgis, Tony Lamond, Eric Pierce, Dorothy Baker, Laurie Wilson, Tommy Hanlon Jr., Dawn Dixon, Jeff Cork, Hal Todd, Jenny Ham, Kevin Colson, Ron Blaskett, Jerry G, Philip Brady and Jack Little. With the Channel 9 singers as dancers, the Channel 9 dancers as singers, Arthur Young's music and yours truly, Bert Newton. And now, here's Graham! It's not my suit, it's not my suit. I, I thought I had another black one, and I haven't. And this is out of wardrobe. And it could have belonged to anyone. Well, look, this is, isn't this the nicest part of the year? This is the time where we don't care anymore. Oh, we care a little bit, but not a great deal. This is the very last show that we're in for 1961. And you can, you can feel it around you that everyone is thinking the same thing. Tonight, when the man did the the clapperboard for the start of the videotape and he said uh, I'm C for Friday so and so and so and so take one everybody gave him a cheer now that doesn't normally happen because you have dead silence and everybody's going ah oh, what the and it's, just, <laughs> it's marvelous I love it it's a wonderful atmosphere I'll sit down I think now tonight as you already know everybody's going to do something different I'm going to try and be good huh <laughs> okay. and um uh, in fact, I don't know what I'm getting. I, if anything, I just think I might stay in the background and compare all this because I know it's going to be funny. It must be funny if, if the singers are going to dance and the dancers are going to sing. It must be funny if Tony Lamont plays a musical instrument instead of singing. And it must be terribly funny if Eric Pierce does something else but read the news. And <laughs> that's what he's going to do. So uh, I think this will be a fun hour. If it, if it isn't funny, well, then it's just going to be chaotic. But let's start. Um, the ballet, our first on, not to dance, but to, to sing. Here are the Channel 9 dancers singing. <laughs> That could be any normal HSB opening. <laughs> I take that back, I take that back. Now, Tony Lamont is next. <laughs> and she didn't know what she was going to do, so she finally <laughs> ended up with a funny looking thing. <laughs> and his name is Frank Shell. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> with a funny looking thing called a melodica. The that... lady next door. Oh, it's the lady next door. <laughs> Does she lend her melodica to everyone? She's very decent like that. Oh, well, you can always go up and knock on the flat next to Tony's and have a look at the lady's melodica. <laughs> uh, I, I want to tell you something. Tony has one, as she described it, 
bad note on, on, on this melodica. Every time she comes somewhere near it, she starts to giggle in, in, in preparation for this foul, sour sound you're going to hear. But she can play it. So <laughs> here's Tony Lamont, not to sing or to do anything or dance or all the things she does well, but she's going to do something real shocking. Here's <laughs> Tony Lamont with a melodica solo. Friends, now we are to hear from Rosie Sturgis and Joff Ellen, who normally take part in the comedy sketches. Not tonight. <laughs> They've provided something else for us, a song, and it's yeah. called The Boy, The Boy on the Scooter. Rosie Sturgis and Joff Ellen. because I didn't know the tune too well, although not that you never guess. <laughs> and uh, they decided to send it up a little, and I, I think we're all glad they did. Lovely, very, very funny. Rosie yeah. and Joff. Now, look, uh, this is the Raoul Merton spot in the program, and Bill Muddyman has asked us just to say Happy New Year from, from Raoul Merton. Keep on buying the shoes. Um, so you can... Oh, it's up to the audience what you want Bert and I to do. Um, we've done all kinds of things over the, uh, over the year together. And if there's anyone you want to hear a particular character, we've prepared nothing. Uh, Bert, this is, Bert doesn't even know I'm, I'm doing this. Terrified, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Usually Bert is the one that tricks me into doing something. So anything I hear, we'll do. Mr. Foo. Mr. Foo. Uh, you mean Mr. Hong? Yes. Do you feel grandfather like... over here? Grandfather. Grandfather. Mm. grandfather. What, about, what about each of them, Gray, wishing everyone a happy new year? Someone said that that's when just then. Yeah, Martin. <laughs> what about the three of them coming in just to wish a happy new ah. year? All right, there we have it. Start off. I would and be inclined, I think, to start off with uh, Martin, Martin, have Grandpa, yeah. and finish off with Mr. Hong. Okay, right. Do it over here? All right. right. We don't dress up or put makeup on for any of this. And we have one. nothing prepared, just in case we die. Nothing prepared. This is, uh, this is Martin, who is a, a Dutchman who came to Australia around about uh, two years ago, and he is a radio engineer for 3AK. That's correct, Martin, isn't it? He had a wedding. Pardon? I did uh, uh, three out of five for uh, seventeen years. Pardon? I did been uh, well, uh, three out of five for seventeen years. Would you say that again, please? I did been with seventeen years. Seventeen years. <laughs> three out of five. Martin, what made you what made you first come to Australia? I wanted to uh, see the Australian girls. See the Australian girls. Yeah, and of all the the girls you've seen here in Australia, who was the one that you? that you, you plug for? Jarwan. Pardon? Jarwan. J 
Joan. 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 What do you think of that? John. John. Joan. Joan. Who is Joan? Our my girl, a little prayer with me. Your girlfriend. Are you married, Martin? Yeah, well. <laughs> married to John. Oh, no, no. Married to Cecil, what you To Sylvia? Well, what does Sylvia think about Joan? She likes her very much. <laughs> Why does she like her very much? It's a silly step. Oh. <laughs> Martin, would you like to say Happy New Year to everyone? Hello, Happy New Year for everyone. Uh, and, uh, good. Thank good. you very much. Next and now... No, 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 mustn't clap. <laughs> it's a good... That's this all. is Grandfather. Grandfather Kennedy. And Grandfather Kennedy <laughs> is actually Graham in about... Oh, 50 or 60 years' time, and he's left television, and he now resides in an old men's home. If you can imagine that this is an old men's home, and I... <laughs> it just about is, I think. <laughs> and I am not me. I'm uh, Burton Ethan III. Something happened to me uh, in the meantime. I don't know what happened, but it happened to me. Did it ever happen? <laughs> Grandfather? <laughs> Grandfather? <laughs> Grandfather? <laughs> What's the matter, son? Eh? <laughs> Grandfather, I've just come out to wish you a very happy new year. Have you been drinking? <laughs> of course I have. Why do you think I've been drinking? Because your breath smells. <laughs> no, not a bit has touched my lips. Yeah, well, how do you get it into you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, don't drink, as a matter of fact, Grandfather. You've given it up, then. What do you, you mean, given it like up? your great-grandfather. You leave it. him out of that. Hey, I Listen. wish I could have lived it still. Listen, whatever happened He's to him? Whatever happened to him? Oh, it's very sad, son. Yeah? They found him on a railway line. I know all. It's a glass everywhere. Yeah. And an old Carayo label. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, when the people whom you used to work with when you were in television heard that I was coming out to see you, yeah. they all sent their, their best wishes. But there were a couple I couldn't contact. And I thought perhaps seeing that you read the papers regularly and some of your old friends come out, you might tell me what they're doing now. Did Jeff Hiscock ever marry the Deb? Jeff Hitchcock, in his 15 years of married life, married all of them. <laughs> they, all, they all got three and a half years each, and then he got them out of it and got another one. And whom did he marry then? He married a four... Uh, four dead. It was just a bit of hung there, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> he married uh, four, four of them, yeah. and then he married... Another uh, member of the chorus? Pardon? Another member of the chorus? Another member of the chorus. Aldine Splat? No, a Brian Dempsey. Oh. <laughs> right, and Grandfather, before you, I, I leave you, wish everyone a Happy New Year, will you? Happy New Year from... Uh, you haven't got a slug on you, have you? No, I tried to say, I don't touch it. Don't you touch it any... You're not like your great grandfather. Not at all. And he's, he's long since gone. I'm a clean, up-living lad. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye and a merry... Happy New Year. All the best to you, Grandfather. It's all made up. It's all made up. The third gentleman we have for you is, uh, is Lee Hong. And Lee Hong is a, a Chinese gentleman who has a laundry in Little Lonsdale Street. So if you can imagine Little Lonsdale Street, could you do some effects, Gray, for Little Lonsdale Street? Beep, beep. <laughs> what was that? That was, a, that was me, Gun. That was a cat. Clang, clang. Pardon? Clang, clang. Clang, clang. I'm just waiting. Oh, here he is now. <laughs> Mr. Hong. Oh, how do you do? Oh, I'm with a new nine. No, I see you. Greetings upon you. And a great big heavy load on you. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a very great height. Yes. <laughs> Don't get nervous now. Just, just, just. You're right. Mr. Hong, the reason I've come out to see you. The reason you are coming out to see me. The reason I've come out to see you is to wish you a very happy new year and also to thank you for being so nice to us over the past couple of months and saying hello to us regularly. <coughs> uh, tell me, Mr. Hong, how do you intend to spend 1962? Do you think you'll find yourself still in the laundry? I hope no, I've got to find myself in the laundry because it's too difficult to get out and have something to eat. Because if you're locked in a stinking laundry, you know you shouldn't. I shouldn't use those words. If you must swear, use Chinese words. Oh, indeed. <laughs> uh, Mr. Hong, Foop. Uh, is Foop around? I'd like to oh. wish him a, a, a very, very uh, happy new year, if I may. Uh, well, uh, Foop and uh, my is brother Foop. Yeah, he's over there. My brother Foop, uh, he's uh, over there. Righto. And uh, you've got to call out to him, and I'll be him too. Righto. Okay. Uh, very versatile and damn clever, Chinese. Righto. <laughs> 
Now, this is... And, and Mr. Hong is still here. Mr. Hong, I think I might say hello to your... Uh, I think I might say hello to your brother, Foop. I wish him a happy new year. He'd over there, say hello to him. Right. Now. Mr. Foop, I wish you everything that you wish yourself in the new year. I beg your pardon? In your new year. In your boot. <laughs> I think just before we go, Mr. Hong, uh, you might like to say a very uh, happy new year, not only to our Australian friends, but also to our Chinese friends, perhaps in native. Uh, but how do you I mean in the native? Well, like on my boomerang no. won't come no, back. No, 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 no. <laughs> Say it with your tongue. <laughs> how do we ever done this one on the radio? <laughs> this is bit, no, you say it. Say it in 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 your native tongue. Say it in the tongue that comes easiest to you. <laughs> oh, I tell you, in a way, now Mr. Corwell taught me. <laughs> no, how do you do so Chinese? He has a number of dialects, hasn't he? Did I had a Mr. Corwell? Mm. Like to my last night, no, my last time, I think, on the television. Satan Chinese. I'd a honey in my hand, and you're honey. I'd a to tell me, as time, honey, hey, hold up, a tip, a tip, a tip, a tip, a rary. Happy New Year. Now, all that Chinese that you said then to your Chinese friends, that meant Happy New Year, did it? <laughs> all that, all that, that. That garble that you went off with, I'll give it a... <laughs> it meant no, Happy New Year. It didn't mean a Happy New Year. It meant a go along to Brother Foop and get yourself at a big dim sim and a big greasy chicken roll. <laughs> but my brother run a restaurant. He runs a beautiful restaurant. Tell me, what's the biggest thing on the menu? A jet pork. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Foop. Bye-bye. Is your car holiday roadworthy? Can you trust your shockers, your cooling system, your points, your plugs? They're just four of a score of vital safety points checked in the mobile holiday roadworthy service. Now is the time to ensure that your car is right for the road, to ensure greater safety for your family. Drive in for mobile's trustworthy roadworthy service. You can trust your mobile gas dealer. He's the car care expert. All the little characters you met then before the vacuum ad were brought to you by Ralph Merton Shoes, as I say, who wish you um, a very happy new year. Of comfort to certain when you wear Ralph Merton. Well now, where do we find Eric Pierce tonight? Not at the news desk, not doing a, an important uh, voiceover on a film or, or uh, hosting a, uh, a prestige program. Not tonight. Eric Pierce is here to play the violin with Arthur Young.
It goes into the middle of here, John Arthur. Anything you want to know, hit me now, right? <laughs> Make up your mind with the camera. It's a rigging. <laughs> throwing coins and Eric's picking them up. I knew he was. <laughs> sort of a dark-headed Florian Zarbeck. <laughs> sort of like that. Well, I was talking to Bert. I shouldn't have been, but I was, because I was hysterical, especially during the first part of that. And I was saying, wouldn't it be marvellous if Eric played it extremely well, which he might well do, for all I know, but played it professionally, because he's, he's got a great head with a violin. There was a, there was a close shot there, a violin and uh, a profile of Eric, and it was... Um, He's a very handsome man. Could look a bit like Sir Lawrence Olivier. A little, and also a little like um, the American actor. What's his name? Um, he's about, oh, five feet eleven, uh, dark curly hair, and always well dressed. You know who it is? No. Don't you? I don't know. I haven't myself. I just said that. Chuck, didn't you think that Eric looked like a film star? Yes. Which one? Lassie. No, don't. <laughs> Well, now, I, I, I'll have to check and see what's next. Oh, it's Dorothy. And Frank. <laughs> Frank and Nicholas Dorothy. Oh, he's the, he's the feed in this, the stooge in this. <laughs> Frank, you've got your plug in. <laughs> Here's Dorothy Baker, not to sing, but to recite. Is that right, Doc? Yes, Pardon? It's called Angelie's Little Sister. Angelie's Little Sister. Mm -hmm. Poem called Angelie's Little Sister. Here's Dorothy Baker. <laughs> Do you want to see Angelina? I'm her little sister. She's 16 years older than I am. I'm 10. Oh, yes, she is. She says she's 18 because she thinks that's such a sweet age. I think ten must be a sweet age, too, because I love chocolate. Oh, have you brought a box? Yes, I will have one. Thank you. Of course, the men who call always bring Angelina a box of chocolate. Yes, I will have another. I think I'll take a few. It'll save you passing the box. Are you a fish? No. Well, Angelina told someone yesterday she'd catch you if only she used the right bait. <laughs> is your hair the sort that grows on you? So is mine. Angelina didn't. She has little curls on the dressing table that she puts on this pin. Oh, there's Angelina now. Don't you tell her what I said. I like it. Dorothy Baker, his wife. And a cute little scene there with floor manager Frank Sepner for tonight's I'm team. The last I'm team, if, if you've just tuned in and I'm not quite sure what's happening, everybody in the show tonight is sort of doing so. We're trying to do something a little bit different. We put the lights on in the studio audience, and uh, Bill McCormick is down there. What are you going to do, Bill? Oh, let's have a sing song. Well, we? that's a good idea. This is not too far different from what Bill does, but he's doing it down in the audience with the with all the smiling faces of our 
our people, who are watching themselves probably by this time because this program was previously recorded. And now here's Bill McCormick. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts all together. There they are, standing in the row. Big ones, small ones, some as big as your hand. In the twist and flick of the wrist, that was the showman said. For I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. Everyone you hit will make you ring. They're standing right. just to show you that I've got my naturalization papers. What a jolly swag man can buy a bill of under the shade of the grill and he sang and he watched and waited till his bill of you come a wanting Matilda with me. isn't very much different to what Bill normally does, um, but he'll be back a little later to do something that uh, is quite um, unusual. Uh, by the way, I was just, I didn't know until now, I was looking down in the um, third row there and I see Mrs. Joff Ellen and uh, daughter Sh uh, Cheryl, and they're there. I wonder if they'd stand up and just say hello so the people, come on, up, 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 come on. Hello, Bernie. Hello, Tessa. Hi. Gee. Tessa's all attractive down there. All right. Well, now, look, I don't know what's next. Yes, I do. Um, Jerry G. We, we've got some commercials. This is a first time see commercial for tonight. And it's uh, Jerry G and Jack Little. So over we go. Oh, now cut that out, cut that out, Jerry. But what, what do you say, this is the last meeting of the new year, of the old year. Let's celebrate, shall we? I'll tell you what, it's going to be a quiet New Year's Day, Jackie, little kid. Now, why, why do you think... Oh, cut that, take that out. Uh, why do you think it's going to be a quiet New Year's Day, Jerry? Because after New Year's Eve, five million lives won't be talking to five million husbands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, oh, I know. Oh, 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 Jerry, Jerry, do you remember... Remember that last New Year's uh, Eve party? Remember that? I'll say. Yeah, what yeah. a party. Oh, what a party. Oh, oh at midnight. The loons came floating down from the ceiling. Oh, wasn't it more? The orchestra played all Lang Syne. Oh, He's for once. Yes. Champagne corks flew out. 
Oh, they were popping everywhere. Oh, I'm telling you, there wasn't a dry throat in the house. Oh, no, there wasn't. No, and there we yeah, were. Yeah, yeah, there we were. And there we were, Jerry, in our L.T. Alexander. Didn't they look gorgeous? Did we, Paul? Uh, <laughs> and right now, L.T. Alexander would like to wish all of you a very happy and prosperous New Year. Yeah. And also, L.P. Alexander would like to thank those of you who patronized him during 1961. Yes, that's how you. No. <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, Well, that's Jerry. Jack Little and I. That's <laughs> right, for sure. And those of you who did not, well, make it a New Year's resolution to go to L.P. Alexander in 1962. How about that, huh? Yeah. How about that, Jerry? Would you like to say the thanks? There oh, yeah, is. where is it? There it's it is. It's North Anus and Corey of Young and Jackson. Two on four, Hunton Street. Oh, that's right, Jerry, and it'll be a happy, a happy, a happy New Year if you go to L.P. Alexander's in 1962 for all your tailoring. Oh, the heat's getting me. Oh, no, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I don't think it's the heat. I think you've been into that New Year's Eve party early. Oh, well, let's sing to the last time the glorious little melody, the L.C. Alexander song. Here we go, Jerry. Well, look, everybody's in the fun tonight, even the Channel 9 <laughs> band over there. Oh, dear, I did. Thanks, Jack Little and Jerry G. I'm wondering if... King's Rose finished by this time. Uh, we might have a whole lot more viewers because pity was such a great film up against us tonight. Someone might have missed uh, the early part of the fun we've been having tonight. I think it's been one of the funniest shows I've ever been in, really, because it's uh, it's so mad. Everybody's doing something that they don't normally do, and it's it's fun. At least it's fun in here. I hope it's coming out that way at home. I've got a dish of ice cream, and I can see it's I can see it's a certain brand of ice cream. And the big question is, who put the cream in ice cream? Cream in ice cream. Top it, top it, top it. Who puts the cream in ice cream? Top A jug of cream in every pack. Top is so good for you. Top a real meal of creamy goodness. Bring home a top of family pack tomorrow. Top the ring, puts the cream in ice cream. Mmm. I really eat this. I love it. Topper ice cream. <laughs> Buy the big four shilling um, family pack of topper ice cream at your favourite confectioner's milk bar. And remember, Topper really puts the cream in ice cream. Well, now we have the... You've already seen the Channel 9 dancers who sang for you. Well, now here are the Channel 9 singers. You saw the Channel 9 dancers who sang for you. Now you're going to see the Channel 9 singers who are going to dance. Now, this should be real strange. So, <laughs> let's have a look. Here are the Channel 9 singers. must have to go down as the highlight so far. <laughs> You're watching a Gladys Rayner, was it? Who did the choreography for them. And they were the Channel 9 singers. Wouldn't, I just had this horrible thought, wouldn't it be shocking if someone came home from a party somewhere and thought, we might watch a bit of IMT. <laughs> yeah, for participating in Tommy's bit. Uh, once again, I repeat, in case you've just tuned in, I think this is the most entertaining, or has been the most entertaining half hour so far, three quarters of an hour that we've ever had, and it's by nowhere means finished yet. We've got a lot more to do, of course Darrods is coming up too. Meanwhile, back at the grand piano, we find Dawn Dixon, and Dawn Dixon is a singer. I didn't know she could play the piano, let's find out, perhaps she can't.
Thank you, Dawn Dixon, and thank you again, Eric Pierce. Well, it looks like we're not going to have enough tape to last the length of the program, so we must hurry on here. Next is Bill McCormick in a different role, with once again accompanied by Laurie Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, here is... Are we ready? Here is Bill McCormick. <laughs> gentlemen. Tonight I am going to dance for you a small portion of Swan Lake. This is the part where the black swan get in. Please, please do not misunderstand me. Simmer down, simmer down, please. I've only got two minutes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with the help of the ensemble, we shall dance for you, Swan Lake. <laughs> Make it fast. <laughs> this is it. 
Watch this. Boom! Rest period. Now, bye-bye, Blues, eh? Stopping to start next year. This is the rest period. Can you hear the tap? Yes, off we go to Darrod's The Style Store in the heart of Burke Street, where we meet the lovely Beverly. Beverly's very smart swimsuit is a flattering little sheath in brine nylon fashioned by Jansen. It's a very popular style with the neckline squared off to the front and curving out to form a bare a beautiful backline. Perfect for all figures, it's exceptionally well cut in a gold on white pattern brine nylon and is certain to be a surefire success on that beach. This is just one style selected from a complete range of stunning swimsuits that you can see at the ground floor of Darren's The Style Store. The price for Beverly's suit is £8.19 and 6, and her high crown Mexican hat is only 29 and 11 pence at Darren's. And now here's our lovely Darren's girl, Jenny. <laughs> Sheer sophistication in black is Jenny's theme tonight in a cunning little cocktail frock designed by I am Martin of Melbourne. It's the ever popular little black dress, but this time with a new twist. Beautifully bare and strapless, the bodice is skillfully molded and shaped to taper to a tiny waistline. The very narrow skirt is partially disguised by streamers of silk organza from which the dress is fashioned. It's only 15 guineas at Darrods. It's a triumph in black by I am Martin of Melbourne. And now a reminder that tomorrow is your last opportunity at Darrod's, remember, a bridal veil to all purchases of a wedding gown at Darrod's. Jenny, you're all sunburned. Oh, I've got all the peely nose and everything. Oh, this is the only part of the show where it's not exactly different. I tell you what I might do. I might, I might get the contestants to ask me a question. And if I can answer it, they win their prize. That might be a good idea. All you've got to do is think up a question. We'll make it simple and then you'll win. All right, let's do that. <laughs> Meanwhile, we'll have a look at the uh, prizes. Major prize is the fabulous Renault Gordini four-door saloon, £1,015 from Commonwealth Motors, where you can also inspect the mighty Renault Dauphine from £889. Other prizes include £500 from the Commercial Bank of Australia Limited, a good bank to deal with always. Four electrical battery appliances and Burgeries paint, value £250. Two seats on Pioneer's 25-day Westlander Tour to Perth, value £273. £250 worth of the latest in lighting by right light. A Meta Space Age 13 cubic foot refrigerator, valued £259. From floor coverings, proprietary limited wall-to-wall -wall carpets, valued at £250. An Astor Barclay TV set, valued 209 guineas. It's an Astor, that's the difference. £250 worth of palm products. Retain your charm, sleep on a palm. £250 of modern tone furniture, furnished today the modern tone way. A deep freeze unit, value £450. Eat better for less the amount away. A canteen of Stanley Rogers, Lady Catherine Cutlery, valued at £249. Australian-made Hoovermatic with a four-minute patented pulsator boiling action, value 123 guineas. And that's about the lot. Let's meet our first contestant. Who is it, uh, um, Jenny Ham? Mrs. Gill of Basil was a grand. Mrs. Gill? Uh, Mrs. Gill come down grand, from right? the Yarra Junction Guide or Scout Camp, which is Guide it? Camp. Guide, Guide Camp. camp. Yes. Mm. Oh, well, it's nice to have you with us. I hope you win a car. Come on, so have a spin. Thank you. Spin it and... Yep, who knows what will happen. Oh, it's number five. It won't be a major prize, but it'll be a nice one. Into the centre. Yep. <clears throat> um, you can win a plaster on plastic raincoat, six pairs of Paragon Miracle socks for men, Two Halenko cardigans by Rotson Knitwear, a five pound gift from Dunkling, a right light single bed lamp, and six pairs of Kaiser Pixies that stay smooth with every move. 
Right, now, listen, ask me a question. Uh, what's the day after the 31st of December? What's the date of the day after the 31st of December, 1961? Um... <laughs> it's on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> it's a holiday, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'd say it was, it's not the 15th of February, because no, that's... No, no. It's the 1st of January, 1962. Right. I got it right. <laughs> you can make the next question a bit harder, if you like. Who was our next contestant? Uh, Jenny? <coughs> Mrs. Tilly of Hampton, Graham. Oh, Mrs. Tilly, you got a nice question for me? How do you do, Graham? Oh, how do you do? Um, have you got a question for me? Well, don't ask it yet. Come and spin the thing and see what happens. Because it might be a car. Round here. Number 22. Turn around and I'll see the one. That's it. A five pound order on London baby carriages, proprietary limited. A beautiful handbag by reptile leather goods. Permanent waste by Randall worth to the value of five pounds. Two Helenko cardigans by Roxham <coughs> Knitwear. And six pairs of Kayser Pixies that stay smooth with every move. Well, now, you've be got nice to ask me a question. It'd be nice if you won all those, especially the baby carriages, wouldn't it? Oh, we'll win, we'll win, we'll win. Now, what's the question? Oh. Anything at all. Well, well, Graham, what's the date after the first day of the new year? Oh, that's easy. The th oh. <laughs> The second. <laughs> got it right, got it right. You got it. Right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Two very easy questions, I thought. Weren't they? Still, it was nice to be able to. Uh, in fact, we were so quick with that <laughs> that we didn't get our numbers out yet. Um, so the numbers were 22, and uh, what was what did the first lady get? Five. Five. So that's 27. You've got to have 27 on your. Uh, on your ticket to participate in February in Darren's Wheel. We'll just... <laughs> Frank's written it out on, a, on an old uh, uh, cover for a, a long sheet. Let's have a look at it. Well, as you can see, the Darren's lucky number tonight is 27. If you are one of the lucky Darren shoppers holding a card ending in these two numbers, you win a one-pound gift voucher from Spotless. If the letter K or, uh, M, K, L, or M is beneath the lucky number, that's right, you see it there, you also win a one-pound gift voucher for goods of your own choice from Darrods. Present your card at Darrods tomorrow only, and remember, spotless exclusive high-tech process for cotton frocks, priced from only 7 and 11. And